Hey friends, I wanted to take a quick moment before this video. First off, I wanna let you know I am very grateful that you are here following me and getting your information about wealth building and real estate investing from yours truly. I know there are a lot of options out there and people you can watch, so I really appreciate that you trust me with your time and attention. Second, you may notice in this video that the video quality is not that great. That's because of the way that I recorded it. I had to do it on Zoom. I didn't have the right camera. Well, I fixed that. From now on, you should expect quality just like this in any video that you watch. So please pay attention because I think this is some really good content, but know that in the future, you'll be getting a higher quality video like you're seeing right now. All right, that's all I got. Thank you and check out this video. Real estate prices are soaring. We are setting records all across the country as far as how much real estate is worth. Now, I do think that's a little misleading because we're having so much inflation that even though property values are going up, that doesn't actually mean they're becoming more expensive because it's all relative. If you work in an industry where you're also getting raises every year, real estate is not becoming unaffordable. But no one can deny that it is becoming higher priced and more expensive for many people. Yet in spite of that, it is still the absolute best way to create passive income for yourself and set yourself up for a better retirement and eventually financial freedom. Now it's not easy to buy real estate. It's actually hard, but the good news is it's not complicated. So I'm gonna share with you my, what I believe are the three best ways to make passive income through real estate in 2022. All right, number one is my favorite method of all time. And this might surprise a lot of people. It's not the Burr method, it's actually house hacking. I think that house hacking is hands down the absolute best way to generate passive income for just about everybody out there. Now, let me tell you why. Many people don't consider house hacking to be passive income. I think they're making a mistake. Let me unpack this for you a little bit. Passive income is not just making more money than what the house costs to own. It's putting more money on your balance sheet at the end of the month than what you had before that. Let's say you live in an area where your rent is $2,500 a month and you're able to buy a property where the mortgage is $3,500, but you can generate $3,000 a month of passive income. That leaves you coming out of pocket $500 every single month to live in the property. Now to many people, they would say, oh, I can't buy a property where I lose $500 a month. And they would immediately move on to a different area where they can get more cash flow. Here's the problem. You're not losing $500 a month when you consider the $2,500 that you were spending before on your rent that is now added back to your pocket, your bigger pocket, which means that buying this property would actually put $2,000 a month back in your pocket. Now, it's very difficult to find anything that's going to cash flow at $2,000 a month for the same down payment that you could use to get that house hack. When you're a house hacking, you're buying a property as a primary residence. That means you get access to the 3%, 4%, 5%, or 10% down loans that you don't get with investment property. Less money going into real estate is better for you. A, your ROI is better. You're putting less money in the deal. B, you have more money in your pocket for when things go wrong. I'd much rather have money in the bank than equity in a property because equity in a property doesn't save me if a tree falls on my roof or something terrible happens and I need to fix it up. And C, you can use that money to buy more real estate, borrow more money and let somebody else pay it off for you. So I'd just like you to consider if you're currently paying rent and you're analyzing deals, look at properties that might be more expensive that would eliminate your need to pay rent and include that in your cash flow. And if you're saying, well, that's not the same, David, saving money and rent is not getting cash flow. Let me tell you, it's better because money that you saved, you don't get taxed on. Money that you made, you did. So saving $2,000 a month in rent or $2,500 is actually better for you than making $2,500 where you're going to get taxed. All right, number two, short-term rentals. Now this is not 100% passive, but no real estate investing is. It's definitely less passive than other opportunities. And I do wanna make sure that I highlight this with that caveat. The reason I say short-term rentals are one of the best way to make passive income in 2022 is because I expect that industry to continue 
growing. You can also generate more passive income than you could on a long-term rental. For many people who are willing to do the work, this is your best option. The last thing that I would add is that people are traveling more. They're working from home more. They have more freedom when it comes to where they are. And with some of the things that we see happening in the metaverse, I would only expect that to increase. I think you're going to see human beings that bounce around the country much more frequently than when they were tied to one specific place because of their job. And they had to be in that office at nine o'clock with their butt in that cubicle. It's different now. And I think it's going to continue to get different, which means that the short term rental play, specifically vacation rental play, is going to continue to grow. Now there's areas that you never could cash flow because they weren't even close to the 1% rule traditionally that have opened up to people that are crushing the 1% rule with the vacation rental strategy. So it's another thing I think that, that a lot of you should be looking at is you can get into really good neighborhoods if they allow vacation rentals and get yourself into some pretty nice passive income. Now, when I say vacation rental, don't assume that means traditional vacation. We're not just talking about a weekend getaway or a three-day weekend that your four person family goes to take. Many people are choosing to go somewhere for a month, for a week, for two to three weeks and work from that property because they like the view. They like the area around it. They wanna be near the ocean. They wanna be in the mountains. They wanna go somewhere that's closer to maybe the exercise they wanna do or a competition that they're preparing for or near a friend. A lot of people, now that they're allowed to work from home, aren't just sitting at home. They're actually working from other places. So if you can create the place that everybody wants to go to, you can get the wealth that that brings. And if your vacation rental has good Wi-Fi, consider all the people that will be plugging into the metaverse as potential revenue for you. Point number three. Best way to make passive income in 2022 through real estate is corporate housing. Now we're seeing a lot of people are traveling for vacations, but there's also a lot of people that are traveling for work. This is another thing that's opened up. Companies that have different branches throughout the country are moving people in and out. A lot of our workforce has been taken away as people have chosen not to go to work. They wanna stay home instead, which means that if you are still in the workforce, you're experiencing increased demand on your time and on your energy. You see a lot of traveling nurses, a lot of traveling decision makers for companies. People are opening up new branches and they need to move employees from where they are to that new branch to help train everybody. And they're not all staying at hotels like they used to. Most people would prefer to stay at their own property. Corporate housing is an awesome option if you see a lot of businesses moving places and they need temporary housing for their staff to get the new business up and running, to get the new employees trained and performing, or for people that are going to move to that area, but they don't know where they want to buy yet. They want to live somewhere for a couple months to get to know the area before they commit to buying a house. And when they do commit to buying that house, there's another person coming in who needs a place to stay. So corporate housing is a great way to generate passive income for yourself that is more than you would get on a traditional month to month or yearly lease. So I just read in the news that Elon Musk has made it official. He is moving Tesla from California to Austin. Now, many of us hear that and go, oh, I bet Austin real estate prices will go up, but we don't think about it anymore. But take a second to unpack exactly what a move like this means and what kinds of demands will be created. In order to move Tesla into Austin, he also has to move employees into Austin. That means those people need somewhere to stay. They're going to be looking at Airbnbs, they're going to be looking at VRBOs, and they're going to be looking at hotels. I was just recently in Austin, Texas for a mastermind with Gary Keller of Keller Williams, and there was hardly anywhere to stay. A lot of people are already traveling there. So as this new workforce is bumped into that space and there's not a whole lot of vacancy or places for them to stay, you can see how much demand that's going to create. Also, Tesla will likely be paying for the rent of these employees that are going somewhere, which means that they're spending company money, not their own money. So imagine a situation where you buy a property and you have rooms to rent out or units to rent out that you can rent to corporate housing. Tesla gives their employee a stipend that they then pay you to be able to rent there. You service those people as they need a house. Eventually they move out and there's new people moving in. This is a very simple way that you can develop some pretty serious passive income for yourself. If you have the foresight to anticipate where demand is going to be, as well as the creative ability to execute on that plan. So most corporate housing contracts are going to be on a 30 day period. So they typically rent your property from you for 30 day periods that are extended by new 30 day periods of time. 
you may be able to write into the contract that they will pay their rent every 30 days, but it's going to be for a 90 day period at minimum. Or you could be okay with the 30 days because you know, once somebody gets settled in, they likely don't want to move to go somewhere else. But one of the ways that this will help you is if you're in an area that outlaws vacation rentals, where you're renting it out for less than 30 days, they often allow you to rent it out for 30 days or more. And corporate housing hits that number. And that's why it's on my list of the top three ways to make passive income in 2022 through real estate. All right, if you're looking for ways to list your property and market people who need corporate housing, here are a few places that you should keep in mind. VRBO and Airbnb both have options that allow you to do so. There's also several less known websites that advertise it as well. So consider putting your corporate housing property on websites like Second Address, Corporate Housing by Owner, Oakwood, CorporateHousing.com, Craigslist, Hotpads, or Sublet.com. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of companies that are stepping up to help meet this demand of where you can advertise corporate housing, which should tell you that there's a lot of people that are doing this, but it's not commonly known by the masses. Now, just for comparison's sake, let me give you an example of the type of revenue that a vacation rental can generate compared to a traditional rental property. I bought a couple of properties in Maui, and if I were to rent either of those out traditionally, they would probably rent for somewhere between $2,500 and $3,000 a month. When I rent them as vacation properties, now I didn't expect them to do this well, but they're currently bringing in more like eight to $10,000 a month. That's two to three times what I could get if I rented it out traditionally. Now, not every market is exactly like Hawaii, but I think you get the point. People pay more for a shorter period of time. So if you can find an area that has a high demand, you almost always will make more going the short-term route than the traditional route. The caveat is you spend more time managing it. So be aware the income is a little bit less passive. And lastly, I'll leave you with this one last thought. If you're looking at using any of these strategies in the markets where I have sales teams, please reach out. We have David Green teams in Northern California and Southern California. And I also have connections with other realtors all across the country that are familiar with strategies just like this. So please email me, comment, reach out to me. You can find me at info at davidgreen24.com or you can check the link in the description. We can also help you finance that property at The One Brokerage. So send me an email there, intake at theonebrokerage.com. And we'll see what we can do to get you pre-approved and connected with somebody so that you can start generating income just like this. Also, many people don't realize if you're buying investment property like what I'm describing, we can use the income the property will generate to get you approved and not your own income. It's a really cool program that we have. So if you're interested in that and you want to be able to buy infinite real estate, reach out and let me know. All right. I want to hear from you. What strategies do you think I should have included that I missed? What questions do you have and what are you doing to generate passive income for yourself in 2022? Let me know in the comments below share what your thoughts are, share what you're doing. And as always, if you enjoy this content and you like what you see, please subscribe to the channel. It helps me grow with YouTube so that I can get this in front of more people and gives me the ability to make more videos. And it tells YouTube that you want to see them.